All right, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us um, for our uh, morning class on the internal use of essential oils. I'm Liza, one of your oily um, mentors and support systems. And I'm so grateful uh, always for having people show up, uh, especially on a Saturday at 7.30 in the morning to learn a little bit more about the power of our essential oils. A um, couple of disclaimers. I timed this badly so normally i'd be sitting at my kitchen counter and i'm sitting in my bed which is totally fine but if my kids come in or my husband comes in i thought they would be out of the house already for some reason um today we're going to talk about the internal use of essential oils and before i get started are there any i've muted almost everyone but are there any questions that people want about this topic uh before before i kind of get started Okay. All right. So um, as always, you can use the chat feature. I continue to learn about Zoom and managing sharing my screen. So if at any time you have a question, you can go ahead and unmute yourself or you can also type it into the chat box and I can answer it at the end. So to get us started today, I thought it would be kind of uh, nice if I shared what I've done so far before getting online with you guys at 730 in the morning. So um, I brush my teeth with On Guard uh, toothpaste and I cleanse my face with all of our um, skincare products. I have moisturizer and um, my morning routine consists of the doTERRA body butter uh, with balance and um, starting at the bottoms of my feet. Um, in fact, though, this morning I accidentally grabbed the Breathe bottle, so I ended up with a bunch of body butter with Breathe on it, and so I just decided to rub that all on my chest and my arms, and it was actually pretty amazing, and then I put um, some balance with the body butter on my feet. Uh, this morning, and for about the past week, I've been taking a veggie cap in the morning of basil, copaiba, or copaiba, and frankincense, and basil is considered the oil of renewal. Um, it helps to restore, replenish your like adrenal glands. And I've just been like running on negative energy. So um, today in our internal class, we're going to talk a lot about the internal usage with these little guys, which are called veggie capsules. And you can just go ahead and open them up. And then I don't use pipettes or anything when I make rollers or blends. I just pour the oil right in there. As you can see, this is my basil. It's completely almost bone dry, but I'm getting out the last remnants. I put about two or three drops of the basil. And I have a little uh, copaiba um, frankincense blend uh, with a dropper top that sits on my um, oil box. And I just put like about three or four drops of that into this veggie cap and take that. So this just helps support my overall um, immune system, um, inflammation in my body. It helps um, to support me and my adrenal fatigue. Um, also helps support like achy joints and, and so forth. And then I put some deep blue rub on my shoulders as well this morning. So I thought that that would be kind of a fun way to start um, this morning's class by sharing what I use topically and um, and internally. And I have uh, peppermint and wild orange going in my diffuser right now. So that's uh, my aromatic use. As well as putting that breeze on my chest, even though that was topical use, I definitely was getting a lot of that aromatically because of um, where, where I put it on my skin. So, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started um, with our class on uh, the internal use of essential oils. So let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, so the internal use of essential oils. This, um, this is, one of the last ways I really started to use essential oils when I first started. So the easiest for me right off the bat was aromatically using a diffuser and placing a few drops um, in my hands and inhaling it, which reminds me, I didn't actually do my peppermint inhale this morning. I knew I was forgetting something. So I got a bottle right by my bedside. Um, so aromatic use was the, the most 
simplest way that I found to, um, to use essential oils when I first started. And then of course, um, topical use. Uh, it was for my babies that I got started. So I immediately started putting um, On Guard, diluted On Guard on them and diluted Breathe on them from almost day one. But the internal use of essential oils was something that I slowly but surely uh, led into. Um, I started very early on with citrus in my water. I love, absolutely love lemon in my water. And to this day, no matter how many other citruses come, uh, to pass, I still hold true to lemon uh, essential oil in my water. But um, I absolutely love the power of taking essential oils internally. They are highly effective. I personally have um, overcome the flu twice. And I don't know if I'm actually supposed to say that, but I've overcome the flu twice. Um, I've supported the symptoms of the flu bug twice by um, taking a very strict internal regimen and um, I've been able to overcome it in less than 24 hours both times. And so I really believe in the power of um, the internal use of essential oils. Now on the flip side, I don't use inter uh, essential oils internally all day, every day. Um, a few drops of uh, citrus in my water is my basic go-to. I shared with you my basil copaiba um, frankincense regimen this morning. But again, that's not, um, that's not, I'm going to take this off real quick. That's not a, uh, a, something that I do every single day. It's, it's, I'm doing it right now because I'm really highly fatigued and I need some extra support in that way. So, um, so I really feel um, that the internal use of essential oils is, is one of the most powerful ways because it really nourishes your body uh, from the inside, uh, inside out. So I guess I'll go back to doing this. That was kind of silly. Okay, so, um, and then just keep in mind this little eye, this little green guy right here, uh, indicates to us that you can take, uh, is, that a doTERRA essential oil is made to take internally. And then just a quick friendly reminder for those of you that are new to doTERRA, just, you know, as we're sharing with people, the way to tell that an essential oil can be taken internally on the bottle is if it has supplemental facts. So this basil right here has supplemental facts, just like food does. And this bottle of Balance does not have supplemental facts anywhere on this bottle. So I know Balance is strictly an aromatic topical oil. And I know that basil can also be taken internally. Okay. All right. So why use essential oils internally? Um, they really provide benefits that topical and aromatic use cannot provide. So as powerful as topical and aromatic use are, uh, taking essential oils internally gives your body something that those two methods of application cannot provide. So we're going to talk a, le a little bit more about that. Some of the benefits, the really powerful benefits include um, promoting healthy cell function, supporting your gastrointestinal health, maintaining healthy immune function. Uh, there's so many powerful cleansing benefits. So not only do every time I open that bottle of lemon water, um, I'm getting the aromatic effects, but as I'm drinking that water, those um, that essential oil is helping to clean clean my system as well and of course adding flavor to food and beverages and you know in this sense they uh you're also getting the flavor but you are getting the support from the essential oil as well um because essential oils can penetrate uh, the cell membrane and even bypass the blood brain barriers this is why um the internal use is so uh, amazing and powerful. Uh, we really can support our bodies at a cellular level with the internal use of essential oils. So I think the first big question people always have is, is it safe to use essential oils internally? And the absolute uh, answer is yes. Um, those who are new, and there are um, older bodies of study that um, would question the safety of essential oils internally. And so before I, you know, go any further, 
I just always want to say and encourage people to do your own research and to always follow your intuition. You know, if you feel strongly that uh, the use of essential oils internally is not something that you want to, um, hold on one second, I'm just going to read this, that you want to embark on, that's that's totally fine. You can get there when you're ready, if if in fact you're ever ready to start using um, them internally. But essential oils come from the natural compounds found in nature. You know, we know this from plants and fruits, and so they provide a safe, natural way for us to experience the um, internal benefits for our body. Our bodies are already. Uh, built and equipped to metabolize and process all of these natural compounds and um, and this just means that we um, we can hand like our systems are built to handle the, su the support from these powerful essential oils um, due to their chemistry though there are several essential oils that are never safe for internal consumption and we'll talk about these more a little bit later uh, but they have they're, they're if they're, they're eclipsed by the, the, you know, the hundreds of others that we can take um, internally. And so let's talk a little bit about the science behind um, the internal use of uh, essential oils. And if you guys ever want to um, do more research on your own, uh, doTERRA has a uh, doTERRA science. Um, there's um, aromatic, oh, Aromatic plant research, I believe, is like a third body uh, that does a lot of scientific um, studies and um, testing on our essential oils. And um, always, you can check out Source to You. There's a plethora of resources. PubMed is also um, another resource where you can check out um, thorough uh, scientific studies that have a lot of data to support the internal use of um, essential oils. So they hold, um, essential oils hold so much powerful um, benefits as inter internally. So how, how does this happen? So much like other things that we consume, our bodies, uh, when we ingest essential oils, essential oils metabolize and provide the body, our body with benefits. And then we, we excrete that. Um, some essential oils, um, because each have such a unique chemical profile, it, how they support our body varies. When you ingest an essential oil, it is transported through your gastro gastrointestinal tract directly into your bloodstream where it then can be distributed throughout the rest of your body to help support you. Uh, just like anything else that we uh, ingest, our body can only handle essential oils in appropriate doses. So when uh, we, we will talk more about those appropriate doses and, um, and a little bit more about the safety behind them. And at the end of the presentation, I'm going to, um, there's a whole book that doTERRA puts out on the internal use of essential oils, which I will go ahead and sh uh, show you guys where to find. Okay. So when it comes to safety, I just, again, follow your intuition. Um, you know, there are guidelines and I'm going to be totally honest, for the most part, I stay under the guidelines almost all the time. But when I did get uh, hit with the flu or when I do start feeling things come on, uh, that are, I can tell, wreaking more havoc on my body. I do up the level of um, ingestion. Uh, I do go past what the recommended dosage is are. So, but I feel very comfortable with that. I don't do it uh, on a regular basis, and I've had incredible results as a as a result of it. So, as we move forward talking about safety, we just want to think always about appropriate doses, which we'll talk a little bit more about sensitivity and toxicity. And uh, there is a list right there of seven uh, essential oils that you never want to use internally. And I'm going to tell you a little. Dirty secret that once I scanned for Arbovite and I just didn't really pay attention. And so for about two days, I was taking Arbovite and a veggie cap, and I never experienced any adverse reaction to it. But um, once I figured out that, that I wasn't supposed to be doing it, I just I just stopped immediately. So um, luckily, it, it wasn't anything major, but you know, accidents do happen. The thing with our oils is that I just I trust them on such a profound level that um, 
I'm not surprised that Arbovite didn't have like a huge adverse reaction to me, but if it did, I immediately, you know, you want to listen to your body. And so anytime you have, we'll talk about this a little bit more, but anytime you have any major um, reaction to an essential oil, you do want to stop immediately. And it's not necessarily that you can't use that oil. You just want to th rethink your application method. Okay. So here, when we talk about internal dosage and dilution, um, you always want to start small. And for those of you that are new to essential oils and just starting, this is so true in general. You just want to start small. Um, and you can always increase what you use. Start small and be consistent. So um, smaller doses more frequently are so much more impactful with essential oils than large doses is. Doses is. Oh my goodness, large doses infrequently, so one or two times a day. Um, I feel like this girl in this picture is like chuckling at me because I couldn't say doses correctly. Um, and so a recommended dose is about one to five drops, um, no more than 20 drops within a 24 hour period. And um, the previous slide I showed you about seven oils that you never want to take internally. Here is a list of about six oils that you always want to dilute before internal use. So what this means is you never want to place these oils directly into your mouth. There are a lot of people, when I first started my frankincense copaiba routine, I would drop this directly into my mouth under my tongue. And after a while, I just realized I really did not like the taste of it. Um, it, but these six oils that are shown on the screen are considered hotter oils and you just, you're going to burn your tongue if you put them in directly. So you always want to dilute with before internal use. I would suggest if you wanted to take any of these internally, you would just pop them in a veggie cap. That would be my suggestion if you wanted to take any of those listed there. But here is an internal do dosage and dilution chart. This comes directly from doTERRA Science. You can visit their blog for more information. You can also um, Google it and um, get the link directly there. And so as you can see, aromatically, there is no real limit on the amount of essential oils that... Um, that you can inhale uh, aromatically throughout the day. For internal use there, there is um, guidelines. And I will tell you that when my kids start to have anything coming on, they do take uh, on guard beadlets. I love the on guard beadlets because they swallow them so easily. Xyler is really able to take um, pills like a champ. So he'll take an on guard soft gel and Tay will get um, an on guard beadlet. And an on guard beadlet, that's about half of a drop of essential oil. So for her, I can give her a few of those a few times. Um, throughout the day. She takes one or two at a time and she takes that a few times throughout the day to help support her immune system. Um, and so there you can see uh, the, the dermal and oral recommendations as well for the um, internal dosage and dilution charge. This is actually for all uses here. So when we talk about sensitivity, um, I have a couple um, main talking points here. And the first one is, you know, I've heard this a lot and I, I tend not to engage people with this because it just doesn't, do, doesn't serve any purpose. But you really truly cannot uh, be allergic to an essential oil. You can have a sensitivity to it, but you can't really be allergic to it. And the reason is, is that um, essential oils, um, Allergic reactions occur when our bodies are exposed to protein molecules that cause us to experience an abnormal immune reaction. But essential oils are made up of volatile aromatic compounds. They don't contain any protein molecules, so they can't truly cause any allergic reaction. Uh, um, although um, essential oils though, can't cause an allergic reaction, they can still cause a sensitivity reaction. So the symptoms associated with sensitivity reactions are often similar to symptoms that occur during allergic reactions. So I, I find that very interesting because I have had some people that have told me that they're allergic to the essential oils. And what, what, what that really means is that they're just sensitive to the essential oil. And so if you are sensitive 
to a certain essential oil. There's a lot of things that you can do um, to combat that. So first of all, how do you know if you're sensitive to a particular oil? Well, if you put it on your skin, you might um, experience, you know, some itching, some rash, uh, some irritation, uh, like you would experience from anything else that you put on your skin for the first time. Um, if you, um, you might experience some, uh, some reactions uh, or sensitivity in your respiratory system or your digestive system. And so um, when you experience these um, sensitivities, uh, it might mean that you just have to reconsider your application method. So you could have, um, for instance, if you put on an oil meat, uh, say like I use peppermint like a mad person, neat throughout the day. I don't dilute it. I just put it straight in my hands. I inhale it. But um, if I was having a sensitivity to that, to the smell or on my skin, I could easily use some coconut oil to try to dilute that down a little bit more. Um, using less might help. Uh, dilution will absolutely help. And, um, you know, in worst case scenario, some people just never get over necessarily their sensitivity to a particular oil. I know that when I started, there are a lot of oils that caused me to have uh, sensitive, like, reactions based on the smell. I mean, fennel is still an oil that's a little hard for me to handle. So digestion is a little hard for me to handle. But no matter how the smell makes me feel. I'm having a, an aromatic sensitivity to that smell. Uh, Digestin is still works and helps me every time, um, whether I take it internally or if I put it on topically. So um, keep in mind that when you experience these sensitivities in, a di in your digestive system, though, you, you really want to probably stop using it for a while. Um, you know, you want to flush it out of your system by drinking a lot of fluids. And, um, just be mindful. Again, it comes back down to the intuition and, you know, feeling connected to your body and knowing your body so that you can make those kinds of judgments for yourself. If you have an experience, uh, uh, sustained reaction, negative adverse reaction though, to an essential oil, please, by all means, go to your uh, healthcare provider. And uh, that's another thing I wanted to say, you know, if anything is uncomfortable to you, um, you've done your own research, talk to your healthcare providers, keep in mind, there's varying levels of um, openness to um, essential oils, even within the medical community. But um, you know, I think it's never a bad thing to talk to your healthcare provider and physician and so forth about using essential oils internally um, and getting some feedback from them. All right, last but not least, toxicity. So uh, the toxic dose of an essential oil is always far above the recommended dosage. So when we go back to, I'm going to go back to this slide real quick. Um, uh, this slide real quick, because, um, you know, I talked about when, so here for the adult, it's a 24 drop max uh, for uh, 24 hour, 24 drop internal use max for an adult. But those times that I did get the flu, I was making veggie caps of two drops of each, on guard, lemon, melaleuca, oregano, and frankincense. So now we're already talking in one veggie cap, 12 drops of essential oil. And I was taking that every one to two hours in that 24 hour period. But I got over the flu. So I felt totally comfortable from that. I didn't have any adverse reactions. In fact, I had nothing but positive reaction. And then the next day, I went down to like taking three or four of those every you know, three or four hours versus um, every one to two hours. And, and so um, just, you know, keep in mind that the actual toxic levels far, far surpass um, what is on the recommended daily dosages, okay? So basically, toxicity refers to the point at which any substance becomes damaging or harmful to our bodies. Remember, any substance, even things like vitamins, minerals, water, things that we see as harmless and only helpful, you know, there are toxic levels for all of these things in our bodies. So it's just all about consuming the, you know, the appropriate dosage amounts. Um, you want to you know, follow those recommended dosage amounts 
as much as possible. Hi, honey. Wow, that is an outfit. Yes, I'm working right now. No, you can't paint, but I'm, I'm almost done. I know you're wearing an apron, and it's a lovely apron, but please, honey, I'm working. Where's your daddy? He left. Okay. All right. I know you want to paint, honey. Um, please just let me finish this. Okay. So, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. So using essential oils internally. Here are some ideas um, about using them. Obviously in your water, um, in supplement capsules, like the veggie caps I talked about, direct application and cooking and baking. Um, you also can place them right under your tongue and swallow. Um, just remember that they're very potent. So one drop on the tongue can be extremely powerful. If you're really sensitive to taste, you might want to put them in a veggie cap. I'm pretty sensitive to taste. Although I love me a drop of On Guard on honey um, when my throat is aggravated or what I feel the onset of a, a cold uh, coming on. Um, so here are some ideas for internal application with some um, really amazing oils. So here's basil. You can use this uh, as a favorite um, flavoring in your um, Italian cooking. For ginger, you can add to a, a sweet or savory dish. Lime, people love lime in their Coronas. And to add to like guacamole, um, Again, all of the citruses that are, can be taken internally can be interchanged um, in, in terms of using them in their water, uh, but lime is really great for flavoring as well. Um, I, I know a lot of people that love to make cocktail concoctions with our citrus uh, blend. Marjoram. So instead of using the dried herb, you could use one drop of oil. Um, oregano, really super powerful. Be careful when you use oregano thyme in your cooking because they're just so powerful. You really only need one to two drops. I've had some people ruin recipes because they've, they've, uh, they've used too much. Uh, peppermint. Tatum's been asking me for days to make her a peppermint smoothie. And Zai's not a big peppermint fan like I am, but um, I love peppermint in a, in a smoothie um, for a refreshing boost of flavor. So, um, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to just do this everybody. So that um, real Are quick. You talking to yeah. See, I'm working. Do you want to say hello? Okay. See, there's everybody now. Can you please let mommy work? Yes. Oh, now we believe that there's work happening but here. Now can I paint? No, now you cannot paint. Okay. Mm. I'm going to just go downstairs and get the paint. This is real life, people. Okay. Um, Here are I some doTERRA products. Get the painting already. Yeah, you can. How about that? You go set it all up, and then I'll be down there in a little bit. I'm going to do it outside. Okay, honey, please. I'm begging you. Okay, doTERRA products designed for internal usage include doTERRA On Guard, um, our digestive uh, digestion line, Slim and Sassy, and our amazing supplements, which I'll talk about at the end of our Zoom. Um, On Guard, I wish I had popped a couple of slides in here about our On Guard line. I mean, um, for internal use, I love to on guard toothpaste first of all that's a way dermally that i'm getting i'm sorry orally not dermally orally that i'm getting that support of the on guard on a daily basis if you haven't tried our on guard toothpaste and you want a sample please let me know because i'm absolutely i can't use any other toothpaste anymore um we have our on guard beadlets we have our on guard soft gels um on guard is i think the most powerful immune uh immune boosting oil that we have. Digestion, again, we also have the soft gels and we have the essential oil to use. Slim and Sassy, we have a range of, um, we have the oil, we have um, supplement shakes, we even have gum. Um, and then of course our supplements, which I'll talk about at the end. But all of these products were designed for internal usage. Um, I also love peppermint beadlets. So here is the ebook for the internal use of essential oils. And when I stop sharing my screen, I'll go ahead and show you on the doTERRA website where you can find these. 
Just a reminder about May promotions um, that are still happening. And I know a lot of us took advantage of. I'm still waiting for my box and super excited. Uh, place any 200 PV order this month and get a free On Guard toothpaste, an On Guard sanitizing mist, an On Guard essential oil, which is like a must have staple in every home, and a wild orange. And these are both 15 mil bottles. Uh, the doTERRA baby line is due to drop on May. 23rd and just a heads up I got a little bit more information it's a kit with three products it is limited time which means what they have is what they have and then that's it now as we know it's doTERRA that kit often means that they will sell out quickly uh, I don't know if they're gonna put a limit on that yet so I would really suggest logging on on the 23rd and getting your baby kits as soon as possible now I do believe that at convention this is like a segue uh, to releasing a full more comprehensive doTERRA baby line but this is just me dreaming with hoping manifesting I don't have any actual evidence or hard um, support for that um, for that for that claim so definitely if you are interested on in those doTERRA baby products um, I would get them quickly um, lifelong vitality pack I just don't think that I can do any presentation about essential oils if I don't talk about the power of these supplements um, you can read that list for yourself but the bottom line is that these supplements provide our body with the essential vitamins and minerals we need the omega fatty acids that we need for healthy brain health and heart health the alpha CRS is like taking a fire extinguisher to our body and like helping to eradicate and um, get rid of all of the excessive amounts of inflammation that are happening in our bodies and to support us at a cellular level. So no matter how healthy you eat, you still need support through high quality supplementation. doTERRA has a 30-day money-back guarantee on these supplements and if you haven't tried them, you really need to. We all need to be supported uh, um, because the quality of our food is not what it used to be. Um, we all need omega supplementation. And um, I just, I could not live with the doTERRA Lifelong Vitality Pack. What's really cool is this is my daily way of getting those uh, essential oils internally. You get um, your all your tummy tamer oils in here. You get frankincense oil. You get um, ginger, caraway peppermint and really awesome um uh appropriate dosed essential oils uh internally as well so i highly recommend that if you haven't tried the the, the doTERRA lifelong vitality pack you really have nothing to lose because they'll give you your money back if you're not satisfied so i'm going to stop sharing my screen now and come back to all of you and see if you guys have any questions You can go ahead and unmute yourself. Can I, I always do this because I just love that so many people show up. So can I take a quick pic? Everybody smile. Messy hair don't care. Saturday morning. Yay. Love it. Hi, Zion. Any questions, you guys? No? Okay, hair, hair tails, I'll unmute you. There you go. Um. So, okay, I don't, because I don't take the, the vitamins yet, mm -hmm. um, I have my other ones. So that internally with doing like frankincense and you're on guard daily, like every three or four hours, is that the same or no, it's just the added boost because I'm missing the other nutrients, yeah? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I still take some of what I get in Lifelong Vitality Pack. Um, so Lifelong Vitality Pack has two forms of um frankincense it has the type of frankincense that we take internally from the essential oil and then they also use um a different form of it for the supplementation part um but even if you're taking those essential oils internally um separately from your supplementation you just need high quality supplementation i mean yeah. because you love doTERRA and you know that because you're on other vitamins and so um Diana always says this thing that I love, which is like, why would I buy 
them from other people when I can buy them from myself. So I would suggest if you love yours, you know, use them up, do one month of doTERRAs, see mm -hmm. if you like them better or not. And then um, if you don't, you can always get your money back. For me, I don't feel the difference necessarily when I'm on them as much as I feel like the crash and burn when I'm not on them. If I miss a day or even two days, um, the effects, I feel it in so many ways. And I get the onset of cold and um, ailments as well too. And what's really crazy is I get a lot more fatigue sick and mental health sick than I do any more physical sick. Okay. So, yeah. okay, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for joining Tilly. Yeah. Okay. Any other? Yes, yes, yes. I can't. Okay, here, Kat, hold on. Is this you, Kat? Are you unmuted now? Yeah, I think so. You're, so you're on your iPad for the screen and your cell phone. I'm on my I, I, iPad, but I have my iPhone for hearing because it can't perfect. hear you on the iPad. Okay, perfect. What's okay, your question? I have a question. Um, what about when you're sick and you can't smell? Uh, do the oils still help aromatically? Um, they should be helping if you put them on your skin topically. Mm -hmm. But how about aromatically Absol absolutely so the way that the aromatic use works like in your diffuser is it's breaking down those constituents to a level where your body is actually ingesting them um in, into your bloodstream as well. So I, I liken a diffuser or aromatic use, even when you can't smell, to like when my son used to get really bad asthma attacks and he'd have to go on the nebulizer, right? That machine mm -hmm. taking that, that um, medicine and breaking it down so his lungs are actually taking it in and, and, you know, breaking up all the gunk that's in there. That's the same thing as when you're using your diffuser and so forth. So um, we actually have a member on our team who completely lost her sense of smell in an accident. And she continues to use the oils faithfully because she knows and believes that they support her body, even though, I mean, I can't imagine not being able to smell them, right? But yeah, absolutely. So stay with it, especially if you're trying to break up that congestion and stuff cat you definitely want to get that peppermint or whatever your go-to like respiratory support is and keep doing those really deep inhales to try to break it up and i would rub um some frankincense and even like maybe cardamom right along my nasal um i'm doing it over and over it looks weird in the thing but anyway right over my nasal what is this like passage to help to help support that and break that up as well yeah, yeah. Can I just add in something real quick of what yeah. I do when I'm sick and I can't breathe? Um, I usually make like some hot water and I don't know if this is like allowed, but I, I make some hot water, either throw it in the microwave or, you know, on the tea kettle or whatever. And then I just add a couple of drops of, you know, peppermint, eucalyptus, breathe, whatever. And I kind of just inhale it and the steam will break up like, all of that gunk, like Liza was saying, but I find that the hot water kind of helps it a little bit more for me. So that's one thing that I do too. Thanks, Marissa. I love Thank it you. in the shower. I put I put on a hot <laughs> shower and I put a couple drops like on the top of the, you know, if, if the shower head's on this side, I put it on this side just, and it's the same thing, right? Getting all of that steam vaporization and <laughs> Yeah, super powerful. I love that suggestion, Marissa, for sure. Just putting that tea cup right under your nose, right? Like that. All right. Anything okay. else? Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys real quick. I'm going to share my screen again real quick, just so that I can um, show you guys where to go. Oh, buddy to find uh, the doTERRA website is amazing, but there's so much information there. So, um, where these eBooks are. And so under our advocates, yeah, I'm not logging in yet under our advocates right here. I'm sorry. Under, um, advocates, doTERRA tools, here are the eBooks. And, um, so far, these are all the classes that we've done so far, actually, online. The essential oils from beginners, aromatic use, internal, topical use. And as you guys can see, these will be where all my future online class ideas come from. 
uh, personal care, cooking, sleep, fitness, um, aromatherapy, emotional, lifelong vitality pack. Um, you can check out that, that one. So uh, just so you guys know where to um, go and get those awesome resources yourself. So thank you so much for joining me on this early Saturday morning. I will go ahead and be sure to upload this uh, link for the replay onto our doTERRA page and on my YouTube page. So just remember that anyone that you have to share, um, that you want to share essential oils with, if they're not able to make it to one of our actual classes online or in person, they can always catch a replay. And um, we're always here to help. So have an amazing uh, Saturday. I'm off to soccer and paint with this little lady over here. So that's like legit real life. I'm like, oh, daddy left you. Home with me. Awesome. Mom, good Yay. And now she wants to come. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.